know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, we're in the building. Harry, what's popping? You ready? I want to get into this because oh, we had this dude I'm on ready. the you, you ready to rock roll? God damn it. Drizzle, right. Drizzle, Dre, you ready? Yep. All right, cool. <laughs> um, this is one of, one of my best friends. One of my best friends. We we don't hang out nearly as, as much as we should. Um... Uh, just a dope all around dope dude funny dude all kinds of shit done all kinds of shit give it up for my dog James Mattern y'all give it up yeah uh, wonderful intro thank you my brother it's good to see you, bro buddy the last time I did your show was years ago and you got me so fucking ripped on a weeknight <laughs> yeah I what were we I drinking bourbon were we drinking um Woodsfuss Woodsfuss Reserve been, buddy it might have been nail polish that's how bad it was <laughs> and then we went to somewhere to have soul food and I think I fell asleep oh we went to Five Spot yeah 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 we went to Spot and all I remember is you driving me to Manhattan blasting Tribe and it never sounded better with the uh, like, oh this is a good night out but uh, right man I um yeah me and Dre was to go to the fuck remember we went to this Five Spot Dre yeah man I was like yo all of the appetizers Give us I think we did that that day too, dog. <laughs> just all of the outfits with a fat ass and long Every ass lashes. Had a fatty, even if she was ugly, still got a fatty. So I like their requirements. Face not important. You gotta not have a yam. Oh, what kind of restaurant was this? Which one was Soul this? Soul food. We went Five there, spot, Brooklyn. Which place did we go to? Oh yeah, you yeah, ever yeah, did wait. a something? Myrtle Avenue here too. Yeah, Myrtle Ave. Which one was that? Jeez, On the corner, it was like a real kind of woodsy oh, old okay. school bar. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I kind of remember that place. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Not so, but well, yeah, we had we had a good we had some good ones, man. We had some good ones. I see you. I I see you. You trying to bring back the legacy? I'm watching you on Instagram, trying yeah. to teach these motherfuckers what time it is. I, I'm trying, and I'm also trying to teach myself. I don't lie when I do this podcast. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remind myself of, of what the fuck this is about. But yes. I, Honest dude, honest dude. Now here's what's funny. You want to hear something funny? Remember you posted that uh, the, that thing on Facebook. Uh, does comedy need bullies? Yes. And then somebody chimed in about somebody uh, driving somebody home and blasting them all. <laughs> yes. I kind of had a feeling it was you, and that person reached out to me. <laughs> oh, afterwards. Yeah, what was the story funny. here? What happened? Was this? Go ahead, tell the story, Matt, James. Well, just, you know, so on Mondays, I'll put out basically something in the ballpark of uh, the, what the topic is for the comedy. comedy etiquette. <laughs> yeah. And I see people debate and um, it's it's very interesting to see who chimes in and what they chime in with. There's a, a book could be written about <clears throat> that shit. And um, someone brought up something that sounded familiar to like a, a friend of mine. And it, he got a ride back to Brooklyn. And uh, Dante, that was still a minute, right? <laughs> I, I believe Dante was kind of telling him what the fuck uh, he felt. So he asked, did this comedy need bullies? Which, which, which I, I don't think he meant bullies. I don't think it would, but the point was, this was a young comic who was just like, you know, it, it just, 
you know, I can't see something wrong and not say something. If I see something, I say something, especially if it's a young comic, because I would always want that to happen when I started doing comedy. You've taught yeah. it to me, and we just bore. You've been like, "Hey, you're a little quick tonight," and I take a pause and I go, "Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's yeah, why I'm not connecting." Because sometimes you sometimes you're sitting in the stands, and you could see you could because I'm sitting in the stands. The coach, it's like the baseball. coach can sometimes see shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What'd you say, Dre? I'm saying it's like baseball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they often see each other bat. And then they'll just give each other like little tips. Yo, yo, when you, you step time. it in, you, you yeah. step it in a little tight or something like but um too quick, you're talking too fast. Yeah, so it was this dude, yeah, yeah. this dude he was doing it was funny because he was doing this joke, and the joke was something about a bunch of was something about um a eagle and a and a mountain lion in the in the back of a bodega and I and I was like, dog. Like it was, a, he had rats, and then he went to the pet shop, and there was a mountain, like some shit. And I go, none of that happened, dog. None of that. It, what are you doing? What are you fuck are you talking about? You don't. Do you know that mountain lions are endangered species? Like what the fuck? Are you you got an eagle in the okay, Brooke. I said to him, you. I said, did you really have rats? He go, yeah, big fucking rats. I'm like, what happened with the rats? He's telling me the story. I go, that's the story you should tell. Why are you telling a fucking story that we don't give a f that nobody gives a fuck about in this fucking fic in Narnia that nobody believes when when there's a real story about you dealing with something you're definitely afraid of that you could talk about? Like, there's no soul to it, you know? Well, it's interesting because he did say that um, basically it was tough love and that it was you came correct. And so that... Mm hmm. If we had more people who were like that, and it's it's easier said than done because I probably was a bitch ass to a lot of shit coming up. Oh, yeah. what are you talking about? You don't, just don't understand me. Uh, and, and, I mean, we all do it. It's a natural thing to do. But, yeah, yeah. You know, if, if you're just trying to protect the business, that's why I mean, one of the reasons why you and I click is we just, yeah. this is what we care about. This is what well, we do. Well, the, we you it. know, the other thing is that I think you, there's a. Man, it, it it this doing comedy is something that has made me, and I, I I would probably say that to all of us, probably the most some of the most the greatest times in our lives Excellent. is doing this, and um, you know, I I think to to tarnish it with kind of with not you know it's like that we should revel in it because it's such a it's such a powerful thing you know what I mean so um. You know, I just hate to see it like I, I mean, there's a way to do it. And there's there's also a way where to a certain point where it's stylistically, you know, like people do things stylistically like you have a different style than I have. And I would never. But I but if I'm if I say, yo, you're real, you run a little fast. I'm saying you're running a little fast in your style. I know you know what I do. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And you're but just looking a, out for me. I mean, if I give you it, it's just where oh, we want each other to succeed. You know, yeah. yeah. And time. that's the thing. And when it comes from a real honest and authentic place, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's it's well, you also will do that. I mean, it's not just comedy, but you'll do that in life in general, but especially in relationships and stuff. You can't yeah. help. But yeah. and I try to do is with what knowledge I have, like when my friends do stuff like, oh, dude, you can't. I remember can't Kenny, my friend Kenny Joseph was like I was driving with him to a Oof. friend's wedding. And this girl, he was just texting and it was I go, you you were texting her way too much. I mean, how long you guys been together? Like two weeks. I go, that is too much stuff. Like, I'm just letting you in it because it, it's going to be a problem. I could see it's going to be a problem. I go, yeah. you are the it's, you, you're not letting enough time pass. This is going to you're going gonna to have to maintain this, you know, right? Like, yeah. you, you know, that you're setting up a standard that you got. Are you going to do this the rest of your life? Like, I know yeah. you're excited about it. You're excited you, now, but you, you know, then you don't you don't give a text back and you got an argument because right. you didn't because you set the standard. Kenny's out of his fucking mind, though. Kenny, I was Kenny, Kenny sex in my whole life. That's the best way to do it. You what? And, and not even on not even on purpose. Not on purpose. <laughs> just, I'll just be forgetting my phone places and shit. Mm. And then two, three hours later, I'll be like, yeah, my bad. Oh, no. my goodness. What a happy accident that is. Huh? You didn't even realize <laughs> that you're a mastermind. <laughs> Yo, you're saying that with friends. I was hanging out with uh, Jared Freed back in the day, who I love to death. Jay yeah, Fred, yeah, I love Jared. Jared's a good dude. There was a girl I was hung up in, and it's rare. This is the last hang up I ever had. And uh -huh. um, I was texting her, 
and I gave a bunch of bubbles, and I'm tr- I'm over. Oh, you would have eaten me up, Dante. You'd be like, you overwrite. <laughs> you you mm. you Hawthorne thinking son of a bitch. You were um, tapping away like Chino Puente on that on that yeah, phone. Yeah, just... and I show it to him, and he goes. First thing he does, he just looks. He doesn't even read it. He just sees my bubbles compared to hers, and goes. Lots of blue, and I just knew right there. Right there. <laughs> and he was being honest. That's all it is. Lots of blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then that's and he was right. He's right. It's a lot of you can't you can't have that that imbalance. Yeah, you just can't have that. It's going to be there's, a problem down the line. It's the subtext. The subtext. That's what people don't understand. Even when you're not talking, you're talking. Your stillness is screams. Things, the way you stand, the way you, the way you look, the look in your eyes. If there's no intent, and you, you know, the the thing is with comedy, we're trying to get, we're always fighting to get to that place that's most honest. And the, but it's the same thing in life. You got to be fighting to be most honest. You know, like I mean, again, Andre is a fucking mastermind in that. Just <laughs> he don't, he just. You know, it is. It is what it is. Andre came st- out of the womb, going, "It's too bright in this motherfucker." You guys should. <laughs> I mean, fluorescent lights. Is that? I feel not, like we could do better. Come on, yo. Let's, we need something softer. We need a softer light. You got a dimmer? You could install something. Dre is so fucking funny. Dre is so funny. He fucking drives me out of his mind. He's so fucking funny. I Dre is like the idiot savant about it. It's just like nah. I don't want to do that. You know who else is like that? Metzger. Like, oh, just man. don't even know. Don't even, he just makes the right decisions because he don't even know. Um, of those two, though, <laughs> one's a little more aggressive than the other. Oh, one's yeah, a yeah, little yeah, more yeah, aggressive. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little, hey, what the fuck? And one, one is eating um, edamame or whatever he's throwing down over there. <laughs> the coolest I've ever seen anyone eat. You're like Brad Pitt in Ocean's Eleven right now. <laughs> Give us the plants eating a fucking shrimp cocktail. <laughs> It's crazy. Um, how's the ladies going, Mo? How's the ladies going? What's going on? Uh, well, I mean, it's you know we are in a pandemic. I have noticed the that um, you know all the talk of the Roaring Twenties. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's going to be uh, truthful. I can tell. Um, I was trying to be very good. I've had a few mess ups early in this year. Um, right. I mean, we're getting close. We've been white knuckling, baby. We're getting yeah, yeah. close. So, you, you know, you, you roll the dice and you hope it's OK. Yeah. Uh, I did. You know, I hooked up with a mask, but no condom. That's kind of a joke. It's kind of fucking real. Oh, yeah, let's wow. go the whole thing. And then wolves and lions and rats. Came. Like, you gonna remember um, that shit forever. That's it. <laughs> you wore a mask no condom. to some pussy. Now, that's, that's <laughs> shit right there. Yeah, I, I would I like wear the mask. your first dead body. It leaves a mark. <laughs> I wear the mask on my dick, but I put it underneath the dick, just covering the balls. <laughs> just yeah, I've been told it. it's improper to do it that way. Right over your chin. Right. It's 15 minutes of spit. So if you're out in 14, you're good, buddy. Your balls are the, gotta, the ball gotta, is the chin of the dick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got the game clock on. You're like, all right, we got to wrap this going. up. You got you get to go home. We got 13 minutes and 30 seconds, honey. We got to finish this up. That's so funny. She's like, take your time. No, the shot clock's about to go off. Does she here. have on her mask? Um, no, I mean, so <laughs> let's talk real here. Let's talk real. Do you know who is um banging during a pandemic? Um not um a, a certain political party and certain I mean it is it is Republicans <laughs> oh, yeah. and I banged the QAnon girl and I don't agree with their politics. I was tolerant enough that night and the night after. But, and, and you can question me. It's like, why would you fuck someone if you don't believe in them? I'll tell you this. If you are crazy enough to believe in, like, lizard people, you fuck like you believe in lizard people. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and I'll, I'll go to their meetings just to clean up. Like, I mean, it was unbelievable. And then really? I'm about secret tunnels and shit, and it's just insane. He showed you her secret tunnel. Yeah, well... <laughs> I guess I'm already on the path. <laughs> you now, know, did you also, know it was before? Pull- no. I mean, dude, so I've been playing a lot in the suburbs, and the suburbs, people yeah, it's full of it. don't care. And I've never seen people so blatantly cheating in the sub. I mean, I've had women like proposition me. Women be like, hey, do um, you want to hook up later? And then, you, you know, I'm a man. I'm pa- I mean, I'm pausing because it's a goddamn pandemic and you don't want to be a goddamn lab rat. But I'm you like, don't want to be a punk either. 
Yeah. And, and then, <laughs> and then, yes. And then, and then it's like, well, where would we go? Cause I'm staying with a family um, for the most part out there. And she, oh, oh, we can't go to my place. Well, why not? My husband's there. What? Yeah. Yeah. We can't go there. So how's this happening? You didn't tell me you had a husband. And um, uh, one time someone goes, who do you think told me to talk to you? Like, it's just, it's <laughs> swinger. It's oh, it's just really. There's a lot of that. And it's kind of like, don't ask, don't tell and shit. It, it, uh, I've never seen more of this. In more hypocrisy. More it's, what I what comes out of my mouth doesn't go in good is incongruent with everything that I do. Yeah, or, or just like people want to have. I think a lot of people settle down um, in the suburbs, and and it's kind of rurally where I've been playing. And so I think people settle down early. They have the kids. They they have all these shits. Their jobs, yeah. two point one cars, and then they realize, well, that's not fun. I still like yeah. side ass. Okay. Right. Oh, I still like to go out and drink and do blow at forty. Okay. It's mm. wild. And yeah. this is from where you're doing the gigs, you're saying. You do a couple of gigs. You're These rural in areas, he's saying. Some of places, my friend, that are Small become town the new bullshit. Mecca. Yeah. What's that, Dre? Small town bullshit. You by yourself in a little ass town with, with a lot of space. Yep. Not a lot of people to judge you, find, about, find out about your shit. People get freaky out there. All the freaking, the craziest crimes come from them small town places. <sighs> Three it's also, it's the also they're like, they're like, they never really stretched out in the first place. So you know what I mean? Now you're 40 and you're repressed, and now you now you're ready to get somebody to shit on your chest. You're like, <laughs> you know, well, it's, I, was in, it's, I was into the city to do freak shit. Let me ask you this: Would you have would you have done her honestly if you knew, like, if you had this QAnon talk in the first place? Would you have done her anyway, or or no? Are you at a at a place where you would go? Because I know there was a period of time, like after you were you broke up with old girl from back in the days, and then you yeah. There was a moment where you you were really kind of weird. Remember we were, were at Times Square Arts. Okay. Remember when we were at Times Square Arts, oh. and you were like, I don't know. And these chicks were. I remember. Remember it was some chicks were trying to pick you up for something, and and you were like, I don't know. I just I feel. Like, like, I, you remember like that? Old, you were like the old veteran, like <laughs> ball player, jazz musicians. Like these motherfuckers want to give you a job. Why? <laughs> Why don't hey uh, have you ever been to Seattle, young man? Oh, I don't know about that. Have you ever thought about playing for the Mariners? Oh, I'm gonna go home. Motherfucker, they want you to play center field. Yeah. I was, um, it was two of them trying. Did you hit but you smashed both of them on one? Back but the, the back then probably none of them. I mean, uh, let's be honest. Oh, right, I, have missed, yeah. I have I have missed so many green and yellow lights in my <laughs> life. And it is a thing now. Um, Why do you think that is, James? What, what oh, do you no think? self-esteem growing up. Uh, no tooth yeah. here. I got beat up a lot. Um, I had to fight a lot. Grandparents raised me. Um, didn't see my mom much. There's all kinds of shit there. I mean, she was an addict, so that didn't help nothing. I, it, <clears throat> very shy, left to yourself. Big age gap with the grandparents. Always just had it in my head that I was a loser and all this shit. And uh, I was confident in fifth grade. I know it sounds insane. I asked like seven girls within five minutes to go to the fifth grade dance, and they all said no. And I was so confident that Dante would have been proud of the young man. I had hair, still missing a tooth. And then I had to beat a girl in four square to get her to go to dance with me, which now in the Twitter, in the Twitter age, I'd be canceled probably for that. Right. Like, you beat her in fucking four square. Um, and we went, and after that, I think I asked a couple more girls in sixth grade and got denied and got called nerd a lot in sixth grade and beat up by just horrible people. Mm. And I think that damaged me going forward. Yeah, yeah. And it's taken yeah. me years to get through it. Yeah. Do, now it, do I'm you, close to, I don't give a fuck at this point, and I really can't be bothered half the time. But when yeah. I want to go, I'll go. Yeah, it did, did it, um, did you have to recognize that, that that's what was going on, or, or did it? Or did you just kind of know and, and was kind of paralyzed, not able to change it? Well, no, I mean, I, I realized that I also had this thing in my head for years to try not to be creepy. I don't know. I, from a young age, I saw that shit as corny. Maybe it's the punk rock in me growing up. Yeah. Same well, like, what do you mean? Explain what you mean. I, uh, just dudes who were like, I guess it's the slime. I, I just saw the dudes who were real aggressive at a young age seemed mm. corny to me. They seemed 
slimy. It was a jock bullshit that I didn't <laughs> like at that point. Right, right, right. right. And, and, and those are all the dudes that, that were fucking with you anyway, were beating you up. And right. So so it's yeah. like this resentment is not really for this. To, maybe not the technique. It's more a resentment of, you know, the stuff that you're dealing with before. Like these guys represent basically your bullies, you know? Oh. Yeah, I mean, and, and so that probably got stuck. And then getting into like punk rock and indie music and weird shit. You didn't like the uh, the people who were like the they were like squares, man. These dudes yeah. just seemed cornballs. They said corny shit. I'm like, I'm not going to be that. And so and then so you, you watch porno. Sort of, right. Oh, go on, Harry. Yeah. Yeah. I so say you go to the opposite way. I, I kind of yeah. relate to that when I was young. I didn't want to. I didn't want to be. I was so worried about being over aggressive because you'd see that in movies or whatever. Mm. Yeah, that I was too nice, and then I wouldn't say anything to anybody. Yeah, like so, so I relate to that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I used to tell I, I, I used to tell Harry, I go, if you tried your best to be rude, I go at at best you will be mildly confident. Yeah. Like in, in your mind, in your mind at that time, you'll be mildly confident. You thinking you're an asshole, just turning it out. But yeah. Well, it's interesting because I, I, I've been using some of your techniques from just mm. talking to you. And I think the three minutes I was sober um, years ago on this show, <laughs> um, the basically when I'm texting or whatever, or someone's DMing me, I, I try to remind myself, just throw it away. Just just mm -mm. Eh, just have that effort. Yeah. Yeah. Don't try. Just fucking be flawless and play with the uh, abandoned like we do on stage. Right. We want to do well. Yeah, but we know there'll be another one. So right. who gives a fuck? So play loose and just see what the fuck happens. So it, it and everyone can sense that. Like now, like do you think when you're thirsty? Do you like, right? Do you think you can play loose, or do you think you're playing loose, or are you really loose? Because the the real the real so real real game <laughs> is no game. So yes. it, it's not trying to be that, or or I'm gonna be that. It's being. It just it's being that. You know, I think I've gotten to that but now, because I'm now. such a, a lunatic. Right. I will notice it. Fourth wall, overthink shit. And then it's like, oh, man, I'm doing well, huh? It's it's kind of like you're not supposed to remind a pitcher that they're throwing a no hitter. Like, right, like right, once, right. Once you tell them, like, oh, fuck. And yeah. then, they, then they're worried about that. They weren't worried about it before. And yeah, then yeah. I, and then yeah. I go, I have to remind myself, just stay loose. Who gives a shit? Who cares? Right now, she's not here right now. Right. So and I'm OK. I'm living. I'm fine. Right, right, right. So right. W w just and I'm doing good because I don't care because I'm content hanging out, watching something, reading something, listening, playing, thinking about the next move in life. Fuck it. So keep that energy going forward, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's because it's funny. because you're, you're you're working like like whether or not whatever anybody thinks you would be doing that anyway. You know, the acceptance or not the acceptance, if that's really if you're living your life like that every day, then uh, it's surprisingly, you don't care what other people think, but it affects other people in such a way because you're so authentic that there's no there's no light between who you are and who you say you are. And, and that's I think that becomes a very powerful thing. You know, it's a very powerful thing. And I think that comes with with age. I mean, we all bitch about yeah. getting older. I mean, fuck it. You probably heard my, my shoulder cracking a couple times already. Yeah. But the knowledge you get and the comfort in your skin that like old people always told me was going to happen. You're like, shut up, man, and go drink more Bud Light. Whatever, yeah. man. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, no, man, this is it. The older yeah. you get, the less you give a fuck and you're yeah. comfortable and you live and you survive. Shit. And that's when you get funny. You really get funny. It's unbelievable. Yeah, so, man. Survival. <laughs> If you survive, there's going to be a few stories because life's yeah. all about surviving. Yeah, yeah. it's a it's funny about. thing. I, uh, I'm mad. Uh, uh, James, I keep calling you mad because we you know. Okay, you. Baby, it's it, tattooed on my arm. No, the um, I, I remember back in the days I'd walk in with the baby blue fur mm. and we'd be up in stand up New York. I'd slide in with the baby blue fur and, and, and inadvertently somebody would go. This happened to me the other day. I had my coyote on. I and love you. the only and the, person who ever says that sentence, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know they. I didn't even know they made fur coats out of coyote. Uh, yeah, it really it seems coyote. like it would be a pain in the ass to catch them. <laughs> they uh, they do it by helicopter. So, <laughs> but they um, yeah, I'm in the coyote um, and um, going. I went to see uh, the U.S. the UFC fight, right? Okay. So, 
I wanted to see the fight. So I come in, I, I go in, the bouncer's there. Hey, how you doing? I greet him, blah, 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 blah. I go, I hit him with a 20, right? He, you'd be surprised what a $20 bill could, like you could buy him. This, he moved out the way, made a path, wiped <laughs> my table. Pandemic, yeah. Yeah, dude, he wiped my my table down. <laughs> you you want, he gave me, you want this one or that one? We got the first round. Um, we had the first round and the bartender came on. I, I hit her with a 20, right? Now, the what you call it, we $40 in, but we are, they're throwing chicken wings and mozzarella sticks and bringing <laughs> shots over and just yeah, good. Just like Jesus Christ, you're Dean Martin. And, I would, and, and the thing is, I probably I probably would have tipped them that anyway, you know, in the course of, of course, well, you know what I'm saying? But just being up front is like, yo, I'm looking you in your eyes and I recognize you. I see you and I understand what you're doing. And bong, you know, here it is. This is where I'm at. And they so now because it's they're jumping around the table, they buzzing around the table. The owner comes over. He's like, hey, you having a good time? I'm like, yeah, man, it's great. Great time. He shakes my hand. He goes, oh, I'm the owner. Such and so now everybody's watching. Everybody's got like, who's this motherfucker? Right. Nobody. I'm just a dude who gives a fuck about people enough to tip him up front. So he. I go in the, uh, the 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 fight. Uh, what was the? Did you you watch it or no? You watched the fight. I watched McGregor about a month ago in PA. Oh I no! This, this last one was this chick Amanda. It's, it's, was her name Amanda Harry? Nunes. She's terrific. Yes, I do like her quite. Oh a bit. my god! Yeah, Amanda this Nunes is... uh, disassembled. Uh, you her seen her, Drake? You seen her fight yet? No. Woo. She's the best oh. ever. She's the best ever. But because yeah. she's. Not traditionally beautiful and not straight, you and barely speaks English. They don't market her like Rhonda. So there's plenty of people who are gonna be like Rhonda's the best. She ever. busts, yeah. she busts Rhonda ass. Yeah, she beat Rhonda. She busts Rhonda. I mean, master. Yeah. But um, it's but the whole thing is they're buzzing. So we we go in the. So I'm, I want to go to the bathroom. I'm I, you know I got my coat on. I'm in the bathroom. I take a piss. And this little dude comes in. He goes, oh, yo, what is that? What is that? An elephant skin? Or what is that? And I go, I don't say that. I just go, it's coyote. It's coyote. And he goes, oh, yeah, yo, I respect it. Yo, I respect it, though. <laughs> yo, I go, yo, um, that's that's coyote, yo. Just now you. So it's interesting that this this. I'm not fucking with you. I don't give a fuck. But when I don't give a fuck about what you think, when your judgment on me doesn't matter, then all of a sudden now you now you now you're the punk that you wasn't. But we you see me do that at stand up when I'm, you know just over the top. It's just like no, I'm I, and answer you straight with just the energy you're giving off. It's like I'm not a clown dog, and I'm not playing this game. It there's a subtext. I've, always, I've learned that's something else I've learned over the years from uh, years of being bullied and then having to stand up for yourself. Um, and I'm not a tough guy, but I've never, you know, I've, I've done. I, I can survive. I don't have a glass chin. But what I've learned and, and the real scary fuckers I grew up with, um, they don't yell back shit to, to yeah. you. It's 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 always. Yeah, this is this. And oh my, <laughs> like like when you watch a movie and shit too, uh, it, it, you think about it. The most sinister motherfuckers barely. It's a yell. quiet and motherfucker. When, yeah, yeah. And when they do, then it takes it, it over the point. But it, it's some cold, them debonair ass Bond villains and shit. And it's yeah, just, well, it's this because there's an intent. You know what I mean? There's an intent. And you and I were talking about that. You know, in terms of comedy, it's like there, there's an intention in the words that you that speaks louder and a lot of times guys especially in relationships and dealing with women they you know they do it in so many other ways if you like you said um you were bullied a lot so if somebody's coming up to you to fuck with you you understand the the the, the science of that you know what the body posture looks like you know what the be like almost almost um you sense it because you've had that situation and because it's a dangerous situation. So you know what the posture looks like immediately. You know what the posture looks like when the guy is changing from. I, I might fuck with this dude like you, you could you could smell it. You, you feel what I'm saying? Oh, baby. Yes, there is a change. Yes, but I, the, can, I can see that moment in people. 
same thing is true when you're out on a date or when you're talking to a girl, just like you can pick up danger, you can and you can communicate fear or you can communicate readiness. You can also com communicate value. The only problem is you got to really have value. Like, so you got to live a good life to do that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, bro. When, oh, no, no, man. I'm just I'm, this is great. No, but but that is exactly what it is. You have to realize that you have something. And it takes you sometimes sometimes it takes people forever, man. Um, mm. Once you stop chasing shit and you just go, I'm this and I'm going to end up being and doing what I'm supposed to. I'm going to mm. still work and do this, but I'm mm. going to stop worrying about what so and so got so and so yeah. here. There's a competence to fucking that. Yeah. And, and, yeah. You know, and, and a few times, uh, you know, in the last couple of months when I hooked up, I remember making a decision going, eh, I could care less. I'm going to have a drink right now after this right. show. And I see where it goes and I'll find someone else or I'll find her or I'll go to the hotel room and take a nap and watch some shit on goddamn. Either way, computer. it's all good. Yeah. It's, I ain't yeah. worried about nothing. I got yeah. gigs tomorrow. I got work to do. We are in the pandemic. I ain't worried. It's just. I know what I'm worth, and if she drives me nuts, I can walk away. I don't give right. a shit. Right. But it right. took years to get to that stock to know how to read the stock chart and realize, yeah. oh shit, I own this $99 a share shit. Oh, this right. $150 <laughs> share. I'm that right. motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. It's it's easy. It's it's it's, it's interesting how to, to get there and and to get there. And then you also it's also like you're negotiating. Relationships are all a negotiation. So it's. It's very weird uh, taking this to another place where there's jobs that I never wanted. I remember I got a job once where they they ended up paying me like a double the amount I wanted because I did. I legitimately didn't want the, <laughs> job. Didn't want the job. I go, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do sales. They go, well, then they just started okay. like almost upset that I didn't want to do this. We'll give you two hundred dollar per diem. No, nah, man, I really I, I want to be a farmer. OK, OK, you're a hard bargain. Ninety three. Yeah. 93, and you get to date my daughter. She's in. Come on. Part of it is human nature. But the other part is you don't know how much you could get if you're willing to walk away, you know. But that's the other thing. When you're willing to walk away, you can change the landscape of the whole thing. Relationships wise, you know, otherwise guys settle. What ends up happening is you're not willing to take that risk and lose. So you settle for less, whether that's emotionally what you have to deal with, arguing over, you know, not answering texts in time because you're not willing to walk away. If you cut that shit off at the beginning, you never have to deal with that again. But if you continue to negotiate and you accept that, like, OK, this time I'll be better. That becomes the parameters of your relationship. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I saw this documentary years ago of uh, Pearl Jam. It was Pearl Jam 20, and they mm. talked about how they almost broke up in the middle of their height because they couldn't say no to anything. And they, mm. they knew they needed days off and all this shit, and it became too much. And they said uh, for the last like hour and a half of the documentary, they talked about this thing, the power of no. And I, it, mm. it stuck in my head. There's a power to turning shit down. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, hey, do you want to hang out right now? And go, no, I don't feel like it. Yeah. Power to that, but maybe yeah, tomorrow. Some, something yeah. I heard was like how saying no to one thing frees you up to the thing you were supposed to be free for or something like that. I'm butchering the thing, but it's something of that. Well, you're saying the de destiny wise. I mean, I don't know about, I don't know about the destiny. Like, I'm not I know, I do agree with it. I'll tell you why I agree with that. Because if you're settling in with somebody who's mediocre, you're not yeah. out there, you're not able to meet somebody who is amazing that those parameters do fit so if i had accepted you know the girl uh, my girl now i'm super happy with i love her i would not have met her if i didn't turn down other girls that were, less, were going yeah. okay it wasn't a bad relationship but i just went i don't like this i don't i kind of don't like that and i saw it as a sign for the future and if i just kind of had accepted that i would maybe still be in one of those relationships and maybe unhappy but because I said no and I moved on, I was free to find her. So I, I mean, agree with that. I, but I mean, I don't I, I, I'm, I don't it's not that I don't agree. My thing is this whole idea of destiny or fate. I, to me, I think that's all bullshit. The, the, the idea is you you. Yes, it's, it's just probable. Fate, yeah. it, it's probable that it's very it's very 
possible that if you have somebody in your life and you're splitting your time that you won't meet other people where in in that sense then you cut down your variables like that's just simple yeah. math probably but, but i don't believe that there's this master plot where you go because <laughs> the bottom line is that you make i mean i i go i look at me and I'm going, nobody planned this. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> this, this, this happened. This this whole thing of who I am, it just happened. Um, and I made decisions, you know, to, to go in different directions or not to go in different directions. It just wasn't all worked out. But you're right. I, I, you if you if you're settling and you're not look, if you're really working on yourself and you you give a fuck about yourself. It's just like it's uh, you know like Andre's doing works out all the time. He takes care of his body, so he won't. He doesn't. He doesn't want to put shit in his body because it matters. You know what I mean? He it matters that he does that, and so he he gives a fuck about it. But if you don't if you don't give a fuck about your body, it's much easier to put shit in because it, it doesn't matter. Because you, you feel like there's a value in that. And I think that's the thing that we don't get is that the, the, the measure of what you think you are, that becomes your value to the other person. Because how else do they evaluate you if they just meet you or they just you're dealing with them week, two weeks, whatever, or just even the moment they meet you, how do they get to know you? You tell them. You tell them who you are. You're your press agent. Yeah. Yeah. My client likes this, that and that and has done this and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Just like my client who doesn't speak up, doesn't stand up straight, has <laughs> talks with rolling, rolled shoulders and and says, maybe I don't know if you kind of want to. Maybe sometimes if you're not doing anything, maybe my you could maybe we could do something, <laughs> huh? you know, and you go, who wants that? <laughs> like, no, who's buying that car? You know, you it, it's but we we're, we're doing it constant. We're doing it constant, and we think we're fooling ourselves and fooling people. And we're not. And we see that on stage all the time. Like we, you and I, was sit back and watch my workers, and we like. <sighs> I've been having discussions with people because uh, someone wrote something scandalous on Facebook about someone who just passed away, and it upset me. And I was reading it to a friend, and in the middle of it, I go, um, as someone who's done this as long as I have. Uh, can you tell if this is a good comic? Like it's those little things, um, inexperience and not really knowing what they're not being in control. Hey, wait, hold up, give me. I'm, I'm not understand. So, so who, well, who was the comic? Who was the comic that they? I don't even know this person, but they wrote something shitty about uh, Richie who died at the comic strip. I mean, the body wasn't even cold yet. Right, I'm gonna right, do right. an episode on this and talk about. Say? Just basically, and I'm you know I ain't here to start no thing. I'm gonna go nameless on all the platforms on it, but like. Said that uh, she dressed down because he doesn't like pretty women, which I mean, I, I was at every audition for like six years with him, basically. And yeah, yeah. never anything I heard. Um, and then she said that she basically wore a hat and, and braided her hairs and didn't wear makeup. And um, but that's part of what you're uh, saying. To, about what, to ple what to please him. Yeah, if you're a comic, Dante, yeah. would any of you guys go to audition because you heard that this person, man, I hear CBS for this part. They want dudes who only have one. Eye. I mean, get the fuck. Mm -hmm. Gonna be who the fuck you are, and if you can't right, get right, the job right, right, based on yeah. who you are, then it's bullshit anyway. Just yeah, but yeah, that's such a rookie thing. I always say that you can tell some people just want to quote unquote make it. They don't want to find you out who they are famous. and do the truth. If you tell some of these young comics, yo drink this but put some milk in it and let your cousin piss in it and then swallow a fucking gobot that your uncle had in 84 and you'll be on tv tomorrow they don't fucking do it because they don't want to put the work because they're not really about the work they're not about doing it they just want right. to make it and they just want this mythical success but that's something you learn years of doing this and get your teeth knocked out yeah. it's not about that i'm still here i've lost probably more than i've won in this business and i fucking refuse to lay down that's because yeah. you love it that's what it's about yeah but, but that is the thing you can see i can tell who's bullshit by posture on stage and also yeah. in how they describe themselves and 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 i blah 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 and i so i decided to do that well you're just telling me you're not good and so i, I was telling a friend of mine <laughs> or discussing I'm like i would love to play poker oh when that guy does push-ups the dude who does push-ups before he goes on i've what? seen a couple of those people i tried it once and i think i bombed <laughs> and so the old superstitious ass said fuck that 
You're supposed to do push-ups before you perform. No, no, there some used to be do. dudes like when we we would do the, like the black rooms. It'd be some dude in the back. He'd be doing push-ups, or he'd be oh, like, "Oh yeah, I remember seeing a nigga shadow boxing. Shadow boxing. They do the shadow boxing. Yeah. You ever see these dudes who punch their chest like yeah. this and shit? <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? I'm getting ready. I mean, there's got to be other ways to do it. Don't, don't you want to do some uh, improv exercises? The longer you do it, the funnier it, it, it's funny. You you get all this energy, nervous energy when you first start doing it. And now at this point, like they got to get you to come off the thing. You're like, hey, they're introducing you right now. You're like, all right, let me put my cigarette <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, like, yo, yo, yo. Tell them I'm Those coming. The Tell them I'm coming. You're just like, <laughs> you know, just you'd be like, yo, can I get a lime? Uh, can, I get a, can I get a lime? And you're trying yeah. to get your drink before you go up on stage. It's it's crazy how how it changes. But when you see that that, that you know, I'm pushed that up, that comes from a place set. of fear. That has to come yeah. from a place yeah. of fear because you gotta hype yourself up because you're yeah, not. You're starting confident. to feel like you're going into a battle, so that's why right. you're doing physical hey. stuff to get your fucking flight and fight whatever the response going and shit. <laughs> yeah. Get your adrenaline pump. You yeah, punch like They feel like they about to go fight something. Yeah. I mean, I ain't going to front. I listen to music and listen, uh, uh, walk around. That's just because yeah. I know after years of doing this, what I need to do to get my head right. And I need to get my juices flowing and shit. Sometimes I, I used, to, I used to listen to, um, what's the name? I'm a hustler. I'm, I'm yeah. a hustler. Who's that, Dre? Which, who's okay, that dude? Cassidy. Cassidy. I used to listen to that on the way. But most of the time, because I was so tired, I needed something to wake me up and get me, just to mm. get me hyped. Because I, like, you know, you know, music yeah. affects you, but not because I was trying to like I was ready for it I was trying to, so yeah, I was trying to I get the energy up to perform. I remember I was angry about something or other one time I had a show, but I just finished watching Kill Bill. So I played oh, yeah. the entire <laughs> as I drove into the city. I, I played great soundtrack. Played the entire to Kill Bill on. soundtrack. <laughs> so good to try to just be, I guess, angry. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking at the time. Yeah, it's weird. Then you now you go. Uh, it's funny, man. Man, um, me and Harry did a gig some at some warehouse, and I was like, you know, I was trying to get Harry up, and he had it. It was a but how, it was a lot. How many motherfuckers was on that show? It was they too many motherfuckers. Ten, ten motherfuckers, and they were and, and they were a doing a lot of time. Twelve Nobody to fifteen knows how to run a show. Woohoo! Ten people for twelve minutes. Twelve That's to fi- twelve like. to fifteen. Twelve to fifteen. Nah, son. Okay. And, uh, Some of these motherfuckers couldn't handle eight. You know, I, wanted, you just I was trying to get people. Harry up, so I was like, "Ah, right, you, I'll go late. I'll go late. I'll go late." So I ended up going last, and um, which is not clearly, you know, Mad Dog. We fucking. I, how long have it been me and you closing the club out at fucking one o'clock in the morning with with six people? Yeah. Um, but uh, but it was just like it was so much. And I went up and I just hit him with a couple of jokes, got a few laughs here and there. And then somebody's chair broke up. One of the plastic chairs broke. The guy fell on the ground. It was, oh, what? You're right. You're right. And I, and I just I looked I looked at Harry and I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm done, y'all. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> it was recent or this was back yeah. in the day? Three it weeks like, ago. About three weeks ago. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Yo, these new shows we're doing, huh? This new world. I mean, we're gonna laugh about it in in a year or so, but man, it is wild. Yeah. I am definitely gonna appreciate a club, like, cause we got to the Kiss point the where, yeah, <laughs> yeah, dog. I mean, it, 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 because I mean, if it, if we were sitting up at, um, you know, me and me and Jamie, we worked together a lot, like, oh, yeah. we, like every fucking weekend, and we would be complaining if it was twelve people. Like yeah. we would, it's all, it's not enough for the crowd. We, we put complain on 50 people, you know, depending on the room. Yeah. 50, if 50 it was a sh- Times Square Art Center is a place that holds 300. Yeah. You're bummed that there's 50 people there. 50. I mean, they did shows in that room when they had like three other rooms. They would do shows in the room, yeah. the big theater with 20 people because they didn't have time to How prep crazy. the other room. How crazy is that? Like that we would just we would be in that place, be three different rooms going on at the same. You'd be running up and down the stairs and shit, yeah. just doing show after show after show. And now we're in this situation where if you get 30 spread out wide what, what was that joint we did we did a another rooftop it was fucking brick city freezing oh, cold as shit and they haven't done a show there since but that's that, that's going to be their money spot when the weather's good that that place is awesome but yeah we played there like 10 people 12 people on a freezing ass night on the roof yeah. that looks like i mean like like cold cold 
Yeah, and they maybe twenty what, degrees, though. about twenty degrees, oh, right? Baby, fucking who the, who know a penguin wouldn't even come out. And these people had a good time, and it reminded and you, dog, to watch them, watch them. I mean, and this is what's interesting, you know, in relate in terms of relationships and stuff. These people bundled up, mm -hmm. full goose downs, blankets, had scarves, all kinds, just just like mummies, sleeping bags, and shit. And you realize that. Uh, how important what we do is yeah. that oh, yeah. as much as you feel like, you know, they think that we're, we're non-essential, but it's such, what we do is so important because why would somebody sit out in 12 degree rather, but the other day I was at the, uh, on 23rd street on the rooftop, it was yeah. 17 degrees out. People are there. And, and they're there in it. Yeah. <laughs> You Buddy, like been, need the contact, need the, the social, need the necessary for the soul, for the spirit. You feel me? Yeah, man, I've been playing in a tent in, in some, you know, there was snow in PA and <clears> it <throat> felt like I was in one of them shits that you give like a child and they shake that shit up, a snow yeah. globe. Whatever. You feel like you're performing to these people. You see them shivering. Yeah. Some of them still aren't adults enough to drink something warm with liquor. They're drinking <laughs> fucking truly still and goddamn. <laughs> January and it you feel like white clothes card white claws <laughs> unbelievable and you feel like you're in a title card for yeah. the old Batman cartoon and shit and you're like holy shit this is insanity they're but doing this a, a year ago if, if you asked your friend or if a friend asked you to go to their backyard or their stoop in the middle yeah. of winter to hang out you're like are you but, fucking crazy yeah. no and now it's like hey do you want to go freeze and watch comedy by a river are you fucking crazy? Yes. Like, yes, absolutely. Can I bring a friend? Yeah, <laughs> wait, yeah, wait, yeah, not yeah. too many because it's uh, it's only a limitations. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, give me all your stuff, plug it, and then we're gonna do. If you can hang out, we're gonna do some listener mail behind Please. the behind the Patreon, all right? Please. Uh, v James Mattern on Instagram. I changed it because of Dante. We had a call when I was still in Vegas when everything was shut down, and you're like. Yo, I'm sending you this. Yo, get rid of that fucking L. Be the James Madden if you can't get James Madden. This is confusing the shit. I'm done. Click, and within two seconds, I'm walking the streets of Henderson, Nevada, and I fixed it. Be James Madden. Um, the Commissioner Comedy Podcast. New episodes drop Monday, 4 p.m. Eastern. It's it's about the etiquette, the unspoken rules, all kinds of cool shit, man, about the business. It's passion. I promise you, you'll listen to it. You'll want to run through a fucking wall. I am guarantee you, baby, and you'll care about our business. Yeah, do you do you have guests on it or no? I haven't. I'm toying with ways of doing bonus episodes. Mm -hmm. Toying with that. I was uh, supposed to initially and I was a solo. A it's a solo and, thing. It's kind of a monologue. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. He's it's yeah, yeah. kind of it, it, he does a great job with it. It was an accident. Really... It yeah. was all an accident. My partner, the guy who's going to be my co-host, like, can we really do 40 minutes to an hour on the handshake? And then I Got the sleep out of my eye. I cracked open something to sip on, and I did 40 minutes on my phone, sent it to the uh, podcast network. Like, yeah, that's the show. And like, all right, well, that's what we're going to do. Nice, so check nice. Out. And my new album's coming out sometime after April. So it might be in April, but probably now May or June. It's called The Check Spot. It is me doing a question and answer with an audience while they pay their bills. The worst part of the comedy <laughs> show, The Check Spot. So check that shit out. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. Wow. Um, Harry, talk to uh, me. You could go to my stuff, at Harry Trajanian, uh, to follow me to see some stand-up clips and everything else. Uh, go to the Man School YouTube page, the Instagram page, the uh, the TikTok. We're all over the place. But most importantly, go to patreon.com slash manschool202 and join us as we answer some uh, listener mail. Uh, drizzle, drizzle, dre. Yo, Andre D. Thompson on everything and uh, andredthompson.com slash theory podcast. That's all, yo. Dope, dope. Um, everything with me, Dante Nero or the Dante Nero. Google me. I'm on everything. Go to DanteNero.com if you need a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Um, you know, uh, just dope, man. I appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate the fuck out of y'all. Also, don't forget to uh, sign up for the Patreon. Really important. It helps us to keep do this, doing the show. If you think that we're helping you and you like this, and I hear this all the time, that how people love the show and this changed my life, sign up for the Patreon, please, and support us so we can keep doing it. Um, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Yo, I'm out, man. I love y'all. Peace. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero.
hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.